under pure purity of government, we're going to see uh, lower prices because we're going to get rid of the carbon tax. We're going to bring down the deficit. We're also going to bring home more power, powerful paychecks by getting rid of some of these extra taxes like that so that our producers, our farmers can make more without getting all these taxes, which at the end of the day, go on to Canadians' vax because of because of out of control and, and really, uh, you know, reckless policies by the Liberals and the NDP government. I'm Vincenzo Cal here with the Cal Productions. Today I'm sitting here with Jasraj Singh Helen, who is the MP for Calgary Forest Lawn and Conservative Shadow Minister for Finance and Middle Class Prosperity. Thanks, Jasraj, for your time and welcome to Let's Discuss Politics. Hey, Vincenzo, thanks again for having me on your show and uh, it's always great to see you. Well, it's great to have you here today. I'm, I'm just reminded we were supposed to do this two years ago. But the election was called right before we were able to do a, another episode. So it's it's great to have you here. That was supposed to be episode four. Right now we're at episode 58. So it's wonderful to have you here today. And let's get this started. Right. And it's always great to see how much you've uh, you've grown and how much you're growing even more. Well, it's 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 so great. You know, it started at the beginning and now we're here. So it's, <laughs> it's super exciting. And, and let's get going. So first off, can you just tell me a bit about yourself, your story and how you got your start in politics? Yeah, so um, I moved to Canada when I was five years old with my family from Dubai. I moved into the riding I get to so proudly represent today, Calgary Forest Lawn. Uh, I grew up as what people would consider an at-risk youth. We grew up through really harsh poverty, uh, saw lots of obstacles in front of us, um, uh, lived through a ton of racism growing up as well. Uh, and being an at-risk youth, you know, you go through the the hardships of of being uh, you know, young and, and having to work early on. I was, I was delivering papers at eight years old uh, just to help out at home and make sure that uh, I didn't put too much burden on my parents. Um, and then I went to high school. I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, with sports, you know, you learn a lot. You learn how to play a certain role within a bigger team and for the betterment of the team. And that's exactly what I feel like politics is like. So it helped me I did get into a lot of trouble, but it helped me to uh, get out of some of the trouble I was in. And at the same time, so after I had graduated uh, in the high school that I, I went to, um, I did accounting. And um, after that, I started, you know, getting back on track. I, I was, uh, I started, uh, you know, doing things within the community at that time. Uh, I was always involved with our our Gurdwara the whole time. Uh, my mom tried to make sure we were connected to our faith at all times. And after high school, after I did my accounting, uh, I had the very I was very fortunate enough to meet some people who were starting a home building business. And so we started a home building business. And at that time, you know, I didn't even know what a two by four was. I was supposed to do with the accounting, and I would look at these invoices and say, well, "What the hell is a two by four?" And so slowly I learned from there and I went from, you know, I would go on the job site. I learned how to talk to people. I learned how to build a house. I learned how to do the service on the house afterwards, dealing with trades, dealing with your, um, you know, the the people that you're getting invoices from. And then on top of that with clients. So you learn a whole slew of things. But along the way, we were very fortunate enough to open up a, um, an after school program for other at risk youth, which was a big passion of mine that I always wanted to be successful so we could give back um, to others that didn't have the opportunity. So we had a lot of these things along the way. And uh, one very influential person in my life, the late Manmeet Singh Puller, who used to be a cabinet minister, the first turbaned cabinet minister in Alberta's history, who was a part of the PC party at the time, I was always, as I grew up, was a, a very influential person within our entire community in Calgary. I was very fortunate enough to watch him, to join in on some of the service that he he did. And um, at the time in 2015, the PCs had lost to the NDP. It was the first time in 44 years. And after they had lost, Manmeet had called me and said, look, I know you're making good money and you're having fun. It's time to come into politics. And unfortunately, a month after I had that conversation with him, uh, he passed away and he passed away serving. He literally passed away helping someone out of a ditch in a snowstorm on the way to the legislature uh, during that snowstorm. And the community, the community at large, um, really got behind and said, look, we we uh, have to take what Manmeet said 
and move that forward. So um, I ran provincially first uh, for Jason Kenny and the UCP. I lost. And six months later, this seat had opened up and I got encouraged by a lot of people. And um, I was very fortunate by the grace of God. Uh, I get to be here now today after that as the member of parliament for Calgary Forest Lawn. So someone like me who came here as an immigrant who didn't have much, we didn't have much coming here, didn't have much growing up as an at-risk youth. This beautiful country we call Canada gave me and my family this amazing opportunity to go from our story from where we were to now I get to represent the, the best riding in Canada, Calgary Forest Lawn, and also be the shadow minister for finance for the Conservative Party. Well, and, and such such an interesting story. I, I always I always think about you know your story, and and you're one of the MPs that um that I've I've known for a while. And I think about your story and some of the some of the experiences you've had, and how you're able to bring that to the House of Commons. And 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 I want to talk about that. Why? I know you talked a bit about how you when you ran but provincially, and then you ran federally. But what ultimately made you decide in the 2019 election to to throw your hat in and and to run? for that election under under the leader at that time and, and the Conservative Party at that time? What made you decide that 2019 was the right time to run federally? Um, so I just had a ton of people reach out and say, you got to put your name in. We need to have someone in there from our uh, collective community. So I had people from the UCP reach out to me. I had ministers at the time reach out to me. I had community members from different faiths reach out to me and they said, you have to run. And so I took that as a sign uh, as, uh, you know, I got to do it. And so it was very fortunate. We had literally 24 hours to make memberships for that nomination. The whole community, all the communities got together. Uh, and, we, you know, by the grace of God and everyone's hard work, we, we pulled it off. So, uh, you know, if you ask me about five years ago, I didn't have any inkling of that I would be a member of parliament. I didn't know. But it was because of the encouragement we had from all these community leaders and other elected officials at the time that really encouraged me to run and without their hard work and, and all the people behind the campaign, I wouldn't be here today. So I want to talk now a bit about your role as an elected official in this segment called serving as an elected official and a bit about your experiences and achievements since 2019. So first, I want to focus on your local community of Calgary Forest Lawn. What has been your favorite part about serving those people as their as their local MP? Uh, look, the most rewarding part of this uh, role for me, uh, first, I'm just so grateful that the great people of Calgary Forest Lawn instilled this trust and this in enormous responsibility on me to be their voice in Ottawa. My most favorite part of this role and something I cherish every single day is the work that we get to do out of our, out of our constituency office. There is no work that is more rewarding to me than being able to help someone. And it's not me. It's without this incredible team that we have in Calgary Forest Lawn, our team makes me so proud that we're able to help and serve the community. I feel like the true service that comes from this role comes from the constituency office, whether it's an immigration case or if someone comes to us, they're usually at their wits end. They don't know where to go. And even if it's not our jurisdiction, being able to help those people or guide them to the place that they're supposed to go. Each and every one of those cases is the most important part of this role to me. And I'm so proud that I, we have a team in Calgary Forest Lawn that takes that so seriously and treats that as the most important, the most important part of the job. And it is something that we look, you know, we 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 take with pride that we get to serve our community. Um, so that is the most, you know, favorite and and the best part of this role is being able to serve people at our constituency office. So now I want to talk a bit about your achievements on the Hill, and, and I want to bring in um, your role as the Conservative Shadow Finance Minister. Um, I want to talk a bit about both, but maybe can you tell me first a bit about your favorite achievements as an MP and maybe tie that in with some of the work you've been doing in recent months as the Conservative Finance Critic? Definitely. So one of the, one of the uh, stories, especially, you know, when, when we talked about my favorite part of the role uh, being in the constituency office, my, I'll just name one of the times. So anytime we're able to solve an immigration case or do something, it's it's an achievement on its own. That's something that every single case that we're able to solve is a huge achievement to me. One of the ones that comes into my mind is there was a, a couple and they were they had a 10-month-old baby that was on a dialysis and they were up for uh, deportation. 
Um, the, the case was, it, it was not their fault. The person that was representing them misrepresented them. And they were basically, again, they were one of those families that were, that were at their wits end. We, we got involved, we intervened inside that case. And literally, we got to a point where they were sitting on a plane on the way back to India. And we got their case solved. We got their case reopened, stopped the deportation, literally pulled them off the plane from Montreal. We, from, it was The destination was supposed to be to India through Montreal from Calgary. And we pulled them off the plane in Montreal and got them back. That family today is happily uh, PRs now here in Canada. So that's one of the examples of, of how much um, joy you get out of being able to help someone that's in trouble. So when we talk about constituency, that's one of my most proudest uh, moments. When we look at our parliamentary work, uh, when I dealt with that risk to youth, one of the biggest, one of the bigger issues that I was dealing with, especially connecting with communities from the UK, was uh, this uh, this the issue of grooming, where there's grooming gangs and people who groom young kids, and we saw throughout the pandemic how much more uh, you know exploitation of youth went up. I was very proud during the pandemic to be able to put forward a my first ever private members bill, and it was targeted for those that that um, you know commit the act of grooming, and. The bill in itself was one that it would be it would have to be considered an aggravating factor when sentencing would come down on anyone that does anything exploitation of youth, that grooming must become an aggravated factor in making the decision because it's something that I saw happening to our especially our young women. Um, and so unfortunately, because of the election, it didn't go very it didn't get past that point. But I was very proud I was able to bring something that I'm very passionate about, about our youth and, and being able to stop exploitation or punish those that do anything against the youth, uh, the youth uh, the, the, with the harshest penalties possible. Um, I am also at the same time so humbled and honored that our leader and the future prime minister, Pierre Polyev, named me the finance critic or the finance shadow minister for the Conservative Party. It's something that I don't take lightly. And every single day when we go into parliament and I get to ask questions on behalf of my constituents and Canadians about the suffering that the government has caused them, it's never lost upon me how big of a role this is. This is obviously shoes that I could never fill because these are the shoes of our leader, Pierre Polyev. But, you know, the role that he's given me. And, and when he gave me this role, I will tell you something that that he, I'll share something with everyone that he told me. He's, when he gave me this role, he said to me, Jazz, the opportunities that this country gave to your family and to me and my family, because we all know Pierre did not come from uh, a really rich family or, or someone that came from a lot of money. It's some, Pierre is someone that was from the grassroots, that built everything by his hard work from the sweat of his brow. He said those opportunities that this country gave to your family and mine Let's go out and bring those same opportunities back to this country that Canada was known for. Because today, under Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, the Canadian dream that many newcomers come here for or youth are looking for is that Canadian dream. It's lost. It's lost today. So it's upon us to bring that back. So every single day we, we bring that with us. And you'll see when you see our leader asking questions, he's never asking about himself. He's always talking about the suffering and the pain that's been caused by the Liberal NDP government on Canadians and the passion he brings and the 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 honor that we get to we get to take into Parliament is something that we always remember every single day in the question period, in our parliamentary work, whether we're asking questions in the committees or just, you know, overall general talking to Canadians. Well, I, I want to make a quick note on Pierre Pauly, the leader of the Conservative Party. He was for a long time um, my my MP. He was the MP for Nepean Carlton. I, he left in 2015, went to the Carlton side. I stayed in Nepean. And uh, he was actually elected a few months after I was born. So he was my MP for quite a long <laughs> time. And it seems like everybody around here has a story about Pierre Pauly. They all remember him. Everybody seems to have a story about him. And and um, pretty interesting to see that dynamic, you know, as a local person to see 
the local impacts he had on the community and the impacts he's having on you, you having, uh, are serving him as the finance shadow minister, possibly future finance minister if he becomes our minister. We'll talk about that later. But um, but it's it's interesting. And, and, and yeah, you know, I'm not going to talk about that more. I'm going to wait for the next segment to talk about that a bit more now. So this segment is called The World of Politics Around Us, where we'll talk a bit about this world of politics around us. So first off, I want to ask you, um, before we go on to more talking about the shadow of finance, who is or who has another politician or some politicians that inspire you as a as an MP? Yeah, definitely. Look, I'll I'll just point back to the person I talked about before who really, uh, you know, kind of put me on this path. That was the late Manmeet Singh Puller, who I considered an older brother. Uh, the passion he had, even before getting into politics, but just to serve the community, um, not just me, you, you'll meet many youth, especially from Calgary and all the way around. I was very fortunate enough not to just know him, but was involved, got, got to be involved in some of the great work he did. He had this, this initiative that he started for Sikhs and Hindus being persecuted inside of Afghanistan. He started a project to get those, um, you know, persecuted refugees to Canada. And he and I was one of the very fortunate people to be able to um, sponsor a refugee family from Afghanistan and bring him to Calgary. All of that work was because of Manmeet's passion to help others out. He was an MLA. He was a minister. And he started that work. And it had it's not provincial jurisdiction, but there was a need. And he stepped up and he got that work done. Even after he passed away, his family and through the foundation, the Manmeet Singh Puller Foundation, that work continued on and it still continues on today. And so for me, like this was just uh, that that Manmeet was such a huge role model for many youth. And just through his passion for serving, it's still lasting today and it'll continue to go on. So he's one of my biggest uh, role models that I had. And I've talked about him a lot in the past too, but um, the impact of his service is still continues on today. And finally, now I want to talk about um, uh, more in depth about um, Canada's finances and your work as the shadow minister. So, so the question usually is, what do you think is an issue that needs to be focused on more? But this is my show and I can change it. So I want to talk about finance and some of the issues with finance. So first of all, I want to ask you, uh, uh, for a long time when Pierre Polyev was the finance critic in the role that you are finance shadow minister in the role that you currently have he talked about the deficit and some of the work um and some a lot of the de- uh, about the deficit and and some of the work that you have done you've been talking about that too i want to talk a bit about maybe asking you if if you you come to power and Pierre Polyev becomes prime minister and you have a capacity in, in his government what's sort of the 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 main things that you would maybe want to do to sort of look at reevaluating Canada's finances and try to maybe bring the 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 budget back to to be balanced it, it would be a long road but the balance bringing it the budget bringing it back to balance what what would be some of the work that you would think would be critical and crucial to do well i guess we know that budgets don't balance themselves first of all uh, and we have to look at why is Canada in the position financially that they are in today? Um, and we have to look back to when Justin Trudeau took over, he said he would not run deficits past $10 billion. And before the pandemic, he was already he had already had broken that promise and was sitting at $100 billion of debt on top of Canadians' heads. Throughout the pandemic, he spent another half trillion or $500 billion dollars where 40% had nothing to do with COVID. And we saw some of the wasteful spending, like giving uh, $54 million to the Arrive scam app that we call uh, that didn't work and 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 put people into quarantine that didn't need to be. It didn't work and it was run way over budget. We saw cushy contracts going to former liberals, like the ventilators that went to Frank Billis's company in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So there was a lot of wasteful spending. What did that all of that do? It created a, an inflation crisis, and we saw how bad inflation was and still continues to ravage today. So it was a bunch of, you know, they printed all this boatload of money, they flooded the market, and what is inflation? It's it's too many dollars chasing too few goods. Inflation went up because the deficit went up. With inflation going up, today we see um, also that mortgage rates are going up, and mortgage rates are going up because the Bank of Canada is trying to counter all the Liberals and the NDP-supported um, deficit spending 
And so they're increasing the interest rates. The interest rates are making mortgages, mortgages go up. And today, Canada is the most at risk in the G7 of a mortgage default crisis because of that. On top of the cost of living crisis that Canadians are already going through right now. So this government is not only running these high deficits, but they cause the inflationary problem that caused the bank of interest rates to go up. We see things like the carbon tax that have, that have done nothing for the environment and only made the cost of gas groceries and home heating more and more expensive. So we call it the carbon tax scam. What would the, what would the conservatives do? Well, let, it's, it's, it, the, the formula is simple. Reduce the deficit, which would reduce inflation, which reduces the Bank of Canada's interest rates, which would avoid the mortgage default crisis that the IMF is warning that Canada is in at the most risk of. On top of that, we would kill the carbon the carbon tax that's uh, not only job killing, but it's doing nothing and making the cost of everything go up. So under Pierre Pelley of government, we're going to see uh, lower prices because we're going to get rid of the carbon tax. We're going to bring down the deficit. We're also going to bring home more power, powerful paychecks by getting rid of some of these extra taxes like that so that our producers, our farmers can make more without getting all these taxes, which at the end of the day go on to Canadians' vax because of because of out of control and, and really uh, you know reckless policies by the Liberals and the NDP government. On top of that, right now, we need to have more housing supply. We don't have enough houses being built in this country. I come from a housing background. And under a peer poly of government, we will be firing those municipal gatekeepers that are stopping from our uh, housing be houses being built, which means uh, incentivizing municipalities. So the more you get more get uh, the more you get built, you get a bonus. The more you don't get built, the less you get built, you will be fined from the federal government. You will get less money going into the municipalities. They need we need to incentivize. 15% of land and buildings that are just sitting vacant right now that are owned federally, we're going to convert those, sell those off and convert those into units. So we get more units into the market. More units into the market means uh, uh, more affordable housing for our uh, youth who 9 out of 10 today don't see home ownership uh, anywhere close anymore. By reducing the deficit and the mortgage levels and the interest rates, we won't see what we've seen under Justin Trudeau. After eight years of Trudeau, mortgages and rents have doubled. Housing itself has doubled. Whereas 25 years, you could pay off an entire mortgage. Today's date, under eight, after eight years of Trudeau, it takes 25 years just to save up for a mortgage for a house in Toronto. It's ridiculous what's, what, what, what this liberal NDP government have done to the finances of Canadians. So this is these are the things that we would do. And I'm from Alberta, and so is our leader, Pierre Polyev. He's a born and bred, proud Calgarian as well. We need more resources. We need more resource development, not less. We need to make sure we get government out of the way so that there's less gatekeepers, less red tape, and less bureaucracy. We'll get rid of these the No New Pipeline bill, which is Bill C-69, Bill C-48, which doesn't let our product leave on tankers from the West Coast. One great way of ca tackling the climate uh, climate change, why don't we give some of our responsibly low carbon energy to the rest of the world? Not only will we have strong Canadian paychecks, we'll have a great economy, we'll be able to get our product to market and replace dirty dictator oil or other forms of energy that are more high carbon intense. This is a great way to lower world emissions, not just Canada's emissions. We need to get more built. Canada is 64th when it comes to permitting. We just recently saw Germany's chancellor came to Canada. He asked for our LNG. Trudeau said there's no business case. Trudeau had up to 15 uh, LNG projects on his desk when he took over. Not one has been completed. Germany got turned away by Canada, so they turned around to Qatar and got their product from Qatar. And not only just that, they went and built their own terminal within 197 days. Canada could be the world leader in energy production and bringing down world emissions. We just need a government under the Conservatives, under Pierre Polyev, that knows that we need to get more of our resources built and not less if we want to help solve some of these issues that are on a world scale. So these are some of the things that, that uh, you know, Conservatives will do. And it's not just something that we're saying. We have a track record. Just remember, Right uh, when Stephen Harper was prime minister, 
There was also a war then, and there was a global recession at the same time. Canada got out of that pretty quick because they had great leadership. And right now, when we see a war in Ukraine and we see uh, another uh, crisis around the world financially, Canada is not recovered. Canada is not even close to recovering. And it's because we have a failed NDP liberal, liberal government that is not putting the best interest of Canadians ahead, but more like their own interests and their ideology. And it's getting Canada at a, at a pace right now where Canada is has the worst growth rate in, in all developed nations. And it's going to stay like that for many years. We need to get those fire the gatekeepers and get a peer poly of government so we can get Canada back on track. So that's really all I have for questions today. Thanks, Jasper, so much for joining me. It was great to have you here today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. And it's always great to see you. Well, great to see you too. And, and if you like this interview, make sure to go check out the other interview with Jasper here on YouTube for Top 10. If you're watching this at the date of the premiere, it's coming out on Friday. So let's discuss politics as a VCAL production. Until the next video, I'm Vincenzo Calla, signing out.